Hey, it's Craig from TC Helicon with Tom Lang. <laughs> We're here to do a little tutorial on our latest Voice Life 3 and Voice Life 3 Extreme firmware update. Now, of course, people have asked us, hey, Voice Life 3 Extreme is out. Are you going to abandon me for Voice Life 3? And of course not. We of course uh, not. said we would not, and we are not. Uh, almost all of the features and things that are coming to this uh, particular update are for both of the Voice Life 3 and the Voice Life 3 Extreme units. Right. And they are updates. Oh yeah, for They're sure. Awesome. We've got big features in for yep. you. First one, this is the big elephant in the room for uh, for both devices. Yeah, there's somewhere there's an elephant. Loop import and export. So you can bring loops in and you can send loops out of both the units. And that's something that's been asked for yep. for a long time. Actually, I think more so export has been asked for, but we figured import is cool yeah, exactly. and actually gives you a lot of options. And why is import so important? Important. Ah, oh, you got that, oh, did you? Oh. <laughs> Import is really cool because it gives you the opportunity to gather loops from wherever you want mm -hmm. and put them into the unit. Uh, for those of you who aren't beatboxers, I think drums, that's a really key sort of thing that you might want to bring in. Yeah. Drum beats, synth pads, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. These can be created in your DAW or you can get them online. Uh, we'll have a, the manual will change for Voice Life 3 and Voice Life 3 Extreme. Uh, we suggested just off sort of what we found on the internet was looperman.com is a good place to be able to get free loops. Uh, they're user created so some of them are great, some of them are really not so great but uh, it was a good free resource. There are tons of paid resources out there and all that if you want to find you know really high-end professional loops or you can make your own in your DAW. Or you can share them with your friends. Absolutely, That's yeah. That's what would be really cool is actually, you know, people, somebody over in Timbuktu creates a really cool loop and they want to share it with somebody in Canada. Yeah. Then you two can build something together and then export it out to the world. Absolutely. And every time the Canadians share, they apologize to each other as part of the loop. We should yeah, sorry about bringing that <laughs> sorry, up. You know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> a little sample. Exactly. Okay, so let's go through the process of importing a loop. Okay. All right, so in the past we used uh, a really small little USB key. Today I've got my big ugly one here. So I'm going to do what we always do for importing backing tracks on uh, Voice Live 3 Extreme. And on Voice Live 3, you probably haven't been used to importing anything. So it's basically you need a, a FAT32 formatted uh, USB stick. And you need to create a folder within that USB stick called VL3 underscore loops. I'll just pop it up on the screen right now so you can take a look at what it looks like. That's where you're going to throw loops from your computer into the stick so that the Voice Life 3 can actually see them. So we're going to go to the store menu first and you'll see some new tabs. So we have uh, loop import and loop export which come right after the store and manage things. So let's go over to loop import and you'll see we've got a bunch of files here. I've got Blues Base A, so for me that's a baseline in A. Uh, 120, I just marked that as 120 for the BPM. These files came down off the internet with all sorts of crazy names on them and I just yeah. renamed them myself to make it a little easier. Um, let's actually go through the process of importing something and we'll talk about this, this crazy named one right here later on. But essentially in the looper, there are actually two sets of stereo files per track. And that's how we get, when you, uh, when you set up a guitar loop and you want it to go out the guitar output, it's actually recorded on a separate track. So when you're importing, you get an option to bring in your loops to either the vocal track or the guitar track. Both of them stereo. Both of them are stereo, exactly. And if your loops are absolutely 100% identical, I mean right down to the sample in length, you can actually bring one loop into the guitar track and one loop into the vocal track. So we've done that with things like you throw the drums into the vocal track and you throw the, the bass line into the guitar track and you make this merged like yeah. rhythm section. It's kind of cool. Um, it's a little bit more finicky because of the loop length literally needing to be sample accurate. So you I can mess around. I think in my discussions with Steve, I think he said he is... He can fudge a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, samples, you know, we don't want you out there counting samples. Let's <laughs> see, 45,050 <laughs> billion exactly. samples? Okay. All right, so let's do what, what we think will be the sort of the most basic import here. So I'm going to use the control knob. It says press to select. I'm going to click it, and what you'll see is it immediately puts a little X next to it, and you also get these numbers and letters over here. So 9 is the slot number, the loop slot. A is the track and VOC is vocal. Why did it pick nine, Craig? It was the first slot that it found that had nothing in it. So that's what it's going to do. Now the interesting thing is I want to actually bring these blues drums in. I'm going to put this blues bass. Put the bass on the vocal track. I'm going to put it on B actually because these okay. are slightly different lengths. This yep. is a long but the bass. Vocal, uh, the vocal side of B. Exactly, yeah. Now I'm going to go down to blues drums here. And now it's gone to 13 because it's looked and said, oh, well, you're trying to assign something to 9. So I'm yeah. actually going to go back here and I'm just going to say, look, I want it actually to go into 9. I want it yeah, to yeah. go on the vocal side here. I'm going to press and hold and it's going to start the import process. Click OK. 
And we go and we watch, as I said in the manual, some X-Files, if you're an X-Files fan. Sip a cool beverage. Yeah, perhaps. exactly. <laughs> These all have to be WAV files. Uh, the backing tracks for VoiceLock 3 Extreme users, um, they can be uh, MP3s, but in the case of the loops, they all have to be WAV files. Yep. Um, you can go 24-bit, uh, 48K would give you absolutely no conversion time. You'd be the fastest way of getting them in oh, there. Well, that was pretty fast. But right? yeah, we've sped this up quite a bit. So now it says importing finished. Press any key to exit. So I'm going to press. We don't have an any key. Yeah, so. Where's the any key? <laughs> For the support people will like that one. Um, OK, now we've got some tracks in there. Well, where did they go? Press and hold. Go into the looper. We're going to go to slot 9. And you're going to see right here, now I've got something on track B and something on track A. Now I'm just going to turn this down manually here. But in the firmware you guys will get, it'll do it automatically, which is pretty Did you sexy. notice, those of you in the viewing audience, that Craig turned down a loop? Volume. Oh, I snuck that in there. Oh my goodness, you Maybe let the can. cat out of the bag. <laughs> okay, show them now, you okay, show Okay, fine. Go on. We realize that when we bring in loops off the internet, a lot of them are just a super compressed 2 by 4 uh, sound. Brick. I mean, they are literally ridiculously loud. You can't effectively loop over them at all. Yep. It was the very first thing we encountered. Fun with like, mastering tools. Yeah, exactly. You need to be able to turn them down. And even in your own loops, it's nice to have a mixer. So now when you're on the loop page here, if you toggle one of the little knobs, you'll see you now get a loop mixer. I'm actually going to go into the setup menu here, and I'm going to make, go to system. I don't know if you guys even knew this was here, but the mix screen timeout, if you like it shorter or longer, you can actually adjust that now. I'm going to set this up to like 10 seconds so that we can see things for yeah. a long time. So now you have the level of track A, and you can manipulate Usually it. minus 20 is a good idea because those things are so hot. By about exactly. 20 dB, and when you go in and record a vocal or a guitar on top of them, they'll be in proportion rather than yeah. the imported track being so loud, everything else is exactly. just obliterated. And you can also scroll down here. There's a couple of useful uh, parameters. We've got the metronome level. Yeah, and, and the headphone met level, yeah, yeah. and then the headphone loop trim yeah. as well, um, then your master looper. Now, the cool thing about these levels is that these three levels, the A, B, and C, are actually stored per loop slot. So mm -hmm. when you go into the utility menu and you save with the loop yep. slot, it remembers these settings because it would be useless otherwise. You'd have to be resetting the them looper every time. utility menu. Yeah, not, exactly. not going into setups in case somebody. Correct. So you'd go that. into util yep. here. I go save. It's yep. going to say storing. Yep. It's picking up what happened there. And cool. Did you see that that big brick got turned down? When you turn the volume down, exactly. it actually is represented a little bit quieter. So you get a good idea of what the volumes are. Absolutely. Now, one of the cool things that the users may or may not have noticed on the import, because we didn't show them the screen ahead uh, of time. What was the BPM the set to before? It was perhaps. set to something like 64. Uh -huh. And now it's set to 120. And you'll notice How that. How did he do that? we magically guess the tempo, which yeah. is pretty cool. And we're as, as long as your loops are, are really good and they're really tight, yep. we are really accurate at guessing that tempo. And the times where we make a mistake will be likely that we've guessed half time or double time. And you can actually go in and, and you can adjust that. I'll show you that in a second. Mm -hmm. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to play A, and you can hear. I've got a drum beat. And then in B, I've got a bass line. So if I just wanted to blues jam in A. Classic bass line. Okay, bass line's a little too loud. Let's go into track B here. Turn it down. Turn Just up the like drums. a real mixer. Exactly. So you can see how you can make these adjustments any way you want. And I'll just go back out here. Yeah. And we'll stop them. Yeah. So now I've got those two in there. I could now overdub over top of it. Mm -hmm. When those levels are turned down, basically it's still what you hear is what you get. So as long as you can hear the guitar mixed in the way you want, the vocals mixed in the way you want, when you overdub over top of these, they're not going to turn down by 18 dB or 20 dB. You're going to hear exactly what you hear in the headphones or the main outs. Well, meaning that if you record it and it sounds right, and you press play and it comes back, it's not going to come back quiet. Exactly, right? yeah, just so people know that, that yeah. it's not going to apply some sort of post next to it, yeah, which is great. Um, let's go over these other tempos. So if, say, this had guessed 60 BPM rather than 120, I could actually go into the Util menu and I could tap on Met. Oh, Met on, sorry, when Met's on. So now it's going to say, tempo locked, choose Alt BPM. Now the alternate is half time or double time. Which in blues I find is very handy. <laughs> I'm just For that go, really frenetic blues. I'm just going to turn that Met back to mute there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So there's crazy blues. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what, that's really cool because what happens is sometimes the, the guess will just literally be that half time or double time, and you can go in there and make sure it works out. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about file naming conventions a little bit. I said there was a weird uh, file name in here that I could have brought in, and I'll just show you that really quick. This being a tutorial after all. This isn't a Absolutely. marketing piece where we're just going, <laughs> it does everything, it's really cool, great, talk to you later. It's not like that at all. All right, so imagine we've gone into loop import here. 
And, oh, sorry, I just have to save the looper really quick. It always makes sure that you don't overwrite something in the loop yeah. by accident, so I'm just gonna save the changes I made here. It's a little warning that pops up. Okay, so now that it's done, I'll be able to go over to loop import here. And be patient with that loop import. Sometimes it takes a sec to read the USB key and it Correct. doesn't always happen right away and you hit it too many times, so. Yeah, I typically count to five and then go over there. That seems to be about the right amount of time depending on the files. Mm -hmm. So remember when we first pushed the select here and it picked the, 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 the nearest free tracks. We got 13A loop vocal, slot. loop slot, sorry. Um, in this case, if you name your file with the slot number, underscore, track letter, underscore guitar or vocal gtr or voc and then this last underscore you can basically write whatever you want after that yeah. so i wrote like a little description electro drum 120. what happens wow. now slot one track yeah. a the guitar side and what does the x mean and the x means that um You're there's something yeah something. there's something in there and yeah. i'm going to blow over it if i go through there yeah. but for those of you who want to take a little bit of time ahead of time to set everything up you could actually make the import process a lot more smooth by just having all of these things named that way and then you just go with, you do select all at the top and you mm -hmm. would just do one big import and it will put everything into the slots and tracks and vocal yeah. and guitar tracks that you want to and all for that. those so. of you that aren't tweak heads like that <laughs> you could actually just export and it will when, when you export you get the naming convention, that however you probably don't get your individual things like this. Right, exactly. The electro yeah. drum part. Yeah. So there we go. We've covered loop import. And loop mixer. Okay, so on to loop export. Okay. So this is a really key feature for somebody who has created loops in the box. Yep. Or if you've brought in some tracks and then you've overdubbed over top of them, you want to get them out again, Yep. we want to export the loop. So same thing, store menu, loop export. Wait for it. Fairly self-explanatory. Yep. There we go. Ooh. Now this actually shows all of the loops and all of the tracks and all of the BPMs and what's in the unit. And any empty ones if you want to go browsing through and you want to look for empty empty slots. Yeah, for sure. That tells you where your empty yep. ones are. So you can see I got a whole bunch here. I could go select all and I could actually end up, you know, exporting all of them. You can go through individually and select whatever you want. Or yeah. you can actually if you it's kind of cool if you like if you wanted everything but a couple. Do yep. a select all, then you go in and individually yep. deselect those ones, yep. so you kind of use it both ways. Um, I won't go through the whole process here of exporting. You would just watch us watching this, but um, that's how you <laughs> do ripping your stuff, exactly. Folks. And then in your uh, VL3 underscore loops folder that is created on the uh, the thumb drive, there you're just going to see all of those loops. They will be named the same way. Right. Be slot one underscore a underscore vocal, slot yeah. one underscore a underscore guitar, yeah. uh, that kind of stuff. You'll get six loops for everything, even if there's nothing in the loops. Um, Yes. I can't remember, it, it's, if you've only recorded on the vocal side, for example, you've mm -hmm. only recorded a vocal, yeah. you'll get an empty guitar one, but if there's nothing in the track, I don't think you get the track. Like if you haven't recorded anything and it's empty, I don't I cannot really remember that at this yeah. juncture. Well, we'll, well, these things are complicated, yeah. as you can tell. We, and they uh, change minute by minute, so <laughs> anything we give you now could possibly change by the time you download it. We, we certainly do have a lot of things to cover in these. Okay. We're juggling a lot of stuff. Okay. That's cool. So loop export, covered that. One of the things that was frustrating for people, I think, when we were going through the loop menu itself, when you're in these slots, is that number one, it was just fairly slow to just chunk through these. It would actually load each right. time and it right. would take some time. Now you can actually see as I go through here, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Hold it now. Works really quickly. Also, scrolls. And also, for you Voice Live 3 owners, Oh yeah, there's 50 Notice loop the numbers yeah. are going up. They go all the way up to 50. So now you this have is an extreme. Slots. That's true, but Voice Live Through, we, we told them we'd support them too, and everything yep. we've said up to now applies to them. Absolutely. Including 50 loop slots. Yep. So for those of you who wanted more than the 10, there you go. And uh, obviously the caveat is loop time is still the same. So your right. inbox loop time is yep. the same. But really, if you're adding a bunch of like four bar or eight bar two loops. Bar. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. That is an interesting thing when you said two bar, just something I neglected in the loop import section, which mm -hmm. we chat okay. really quickly about. Tell me about it. The WAV files, when you import them, for the tempo guess to work correctly, need to be power of two, which just means one bar, two bars, four bars, eight bars, 16, 32, 128. How is one oh, bar a power of two? Explain that. Uh, I don't know exactly how that works in Power of Two. But the Power of Two is just room. so memorable. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But essentially, you, okay. you can't put in a seven bar loop and have it guess the tempo correctly. Oh, okay. So that's just one of the limitations of the right. way the math works. We're not doing um, an offline beat detection or anything. We're just yeah. literally using some. And if some you guys math. are making seven bar loops, you got your own problems. Anyway, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> yeah, and we do currently, with the tempo guessing and all that, only support four four time. Just so you know, there are no other time signatures. All right, in so, rock and roll anyway. Exactly. So yeah, there are no other time <laughs> signatures. Three, four, that's a waltz. <laughs> uh, okay, so the next thing is, we've had a lot of requests to say, look, 
when I go to a particular preset, I want a particular loop slot to load. Yeah, with my metronome settings, right, for example. Right, exactly. So right now, we're actually on slot 50. I'll show mm -hmm. you what's happened. I've associated a loop slot with this Blues Jam in A. So oh. if I go away from this preset, yep. and I come back, and now I go back into the looper, you'll see I'm no longer on slot 50. I'm on slot 4, and guess what's there? Those drums. Those blues drums. Those blues drums that, that I go had with from before. that blues jam preset. Exactly. Yeah. So you can get a nice little starting point. You've Absolutely. got everything you want there. Yeah. And so, for how did you do that? Well, what I did is first of all, I saved the loop slot the way I wanted it, yep. so all the settings were right. I went into the looper menu here. Ooh, new tabs. Yeah. So there's a couple well, of new tabs here. Yeah. For the uh, for the voice like three people, you'll see yes. the preset tab. Voice like three. Just ignore this. Yeah, you'll see it. Just just hands over there. <laughs> um, what you do is go to preset and it has looper load slot. Right. And basically I just set that to the number I wanted, stored the, pre uh, the, the uh, preset now, so that's a little bit different. You're not going back to that utility menu. This is saying this preset is loading this loop slot. So we got right. that the tie So the loop there. slot is number four. Yep, and I would I would double store like yes. that to actually yep. save it. That's how it stores. But the preset is 29. Preset is right. 29, exactly. yeah. Now same thing Very goes handy. for uh, this other preset that is really aptly named Let's Have Sax. <laughs> Too I, much sax, not enough violins. I have anyway. loaded slot five automatically with that. And you'll uh. actually see that with this particular one, I um, I even have the input set to only pick up the guitar because I didn't want to do any yep, looping while you're singing. So that's another useful yep. feature. You know, you can say on, on this particular performance, I'm going to want the guitar and the vocal captured. On this next one, I only want the guitar. Set all those up in advance, and then you never have to worry about it. All right, and next thing. 50, 50 slots that you can store with your 500 Exactly, pieces, and those yeah. could, um, for example, they could be empty too. I mean, if you just oh, want yeah, the, yeah. the template, like you want the met to be a certain way, yep. you want whatever to be happening, yep. that's a really good way to template the things up. Next thing to show you is a little improvement. When you're in the looper and you will want to erase everything, you used to have to go util. Oh, this is big. Get ready for it. Erase, and then you hit erase all. Oh, okay. Right? But now, we saved you one button press, but one button press can be significant when the time pressure yeah, is yeah. on you. Now you just go util. Do it, Craig. Press and hold erase. Oh! And they're all it. Okay, so that gives you that chance to just not have to dive down one menu deeper. Now, if I've saved that, uh, is that going to kill that cool loop that we were going to use later? Uh, if you go util and save, yes, it will. Okay. If I just literally move away from uh, from this, if I go into util here, util, there we go, and I move away, and I say okay to lose changes, and I say uh, yes. Yes, we can lose right? the changes. That's fine. I can lose yeah. the changes, which was deleting it. Wow, that was going to be loud. That is a brick. <laughs> now I go back. And it's back again, so I made sure it didn't get deleted. We think of everything. <laughs> okay, so I've had this MP76 sitting here the whole time next to me. Hmm. Uh, let's talk about the one feature we added let's to talk MP76. About sax, baby. Let's talk about, I think it's on 30. Uh, whatever. Oh, you missed it. There we go. <laughs> let's have some sax. All right. Y'all want to have some on sax camera. with me? Okay. Let's talk about sax, baby. So have you assigned them to something? Or no, heck no. Okay. Why don't you show the folks how to do that? Cool. So in the setup menu, we're going to go over to the mic control uh -huh. thing. We've got it set up for MP76. Yep. Now we have all these hit things set up here. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to do yeah, the, the folks have seen this before. Yeah, you've all seen it before. We're going to show you a new trick. We're going to go way down way. here to boop, boop, it just makes preset it nice. up. Or we'll do preset down on the left. That yeah, yeah, makes yeah. more sense to yeah, my yeah. brain. All right, and then we'll go. He's going to speed this up in editing. Preset up. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so now I have preset up and down on MP76. You'll see as I push the button, I get preset down. And I get preset up, mm -hmm. and uh, they even scroll, which is really nice. <sighs> That's the new thing. Yeah. So, so yeah. we were always able to do preset up and down, mm -hmm. but now you can do the scrolling through. We were finding it was really cumbersome. It was kind of just an oversight. We just should have. And put can that you in there. people please send us some videos of you using this stuff? We know you've got the gear, yeah. and we know you're using it live. So please send us some videos. We'd love to see those. Absolutely. Okay, so the other thing that we're going to talk about really briefly here is an extreme only feature. So Voice Live three people pay no attention have a drink. for two seconds. Yeah. Um, in the sequences themselves, when you're recording a sequence with a backing track, we now capture harmony hold as a, as a function. If you were mm -hmm, to right. perform a harmony hold, that can be uh, recorded directly into the sequence. And that and just for gives those you of you who haven't used it, sorry to interrupt. Oh, yeah. Harmony hold is a gas. It's pretty cool. It really is <laughs> cool. Absolutely. Um, so if you haven't used it already, you can definitely experiment with yeah. it. Basically, you sing. As soon as you're holding your note, you press and hold the button, and it holds those harmonies, and you can you can do like a little run or something vocally. It sounds really awesome. That's the one that really wakes them up when people yeah. are looking at you and you're singing along, and they're going, "Yeah, I can do harmony and everything." And then you go, "Na na na na," and you move your, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It so they love really that cool. one. Yeah. But the the thing is, when you record that into the backing track, now you can sing that part, and you don't have to go. Think to look down to get your foot oriented. Right. You can just, it'll do it automatically for you. So you can sing and it'll go, ah, it'll go, ah. Awesome. 
Cool, so that brings us to the end of the features that we've added. Yep. Of course, only just a few you know, minor features, so it's all good. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the fixes we put in. There's always something Tweaks. that we can tweak, we can make better, we can actually fix if something's broken. We love broken. doing it. <laughs> Often the, uh, the, the fixes are really the catalyst to get the new features in, you know, because we start doing the fix and then Tom and I are running to the developers thinking, like, yeah, so maybe we could... Once you've got that open, yeah. can't you just type some more words <laughs> into it and make it do the things we want it yeah. to do? Adding a loop mixer must just be, you know, you type add loop mixer and then you <laughs> set value to yes or one, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's so, yeah. We that's understand. pretty technical, it you know. Is. We don't want the folks to try, go and try that themselves. <laughs> All right, so the first in the fixes that we uh, didn't like about the way that VoiceLock 3 was working before mm -hmm. was that in the mix page, so the the, uh, the regular mix page, not the loop mix page, but in this main mix, if you had recorded a guitar part in the looper and then you turn this guitar level up and down, it would control the guitar level in the looper as well as your live guitar level that you were playing with. Yeah. And originally when we put out the product, we kind of thought, oh, that'd be cool, like you could adjust your guitar after the fact, blah, blah. And then people said, man, is that ever useless. Drives you crazy. <laughs> I'm chasing yeah. my tail Sorry. all the time. I try and turn down the, the recorded level, then I want to play something over top of it, and then it turns down that level, and you're, yeah, you're in this infinite loop. Yeah. So we basically just disconnected that. What you can do is use a volume pedal, turn down your guitar. Basically mm -hmm. now, what you hear going into the guitar side of the looper is what you get back out of it. So as you're using a volume pedal, you just make it quieter as you're playing, and it's going to record quieter into the looper. You mm -hmm. make it louder. Yeah. The actual overall guitar level that we were looking at there is going to be for your live guitar. That's going to be for your general mix between your vocal, your guitar, your aux, all that kind of stuff. That's where you just adjust that. Yeah, so that's kind of a, a nice fix and people ask, a lot of people ask for that one, a including absolutely. us. Yeah. We Can got, you guys fix this stuff? We thought it was so cool until it totally wasn't. Yeah. Um, well, the next fix, can I talk about yeah, this one? Yeah, of course. Um, some, not all of you are using guitars to control uh, the harmony. Mm -hmm. You can use hard tune scale, or rather you can use uh, key and scale, mm -hmm. and some of you set your key and scale to global so that when you set the key and scale in harmony, for example, to some key right. and then you go to the next preset, yeah. you want it to be in the same key and scale. Correct, yes. And it wasn't. It wasn't exactly <laughs> working. We were half right. We got the key right. We yeah. didn't get the scale right. So if you want to, if you were in like C minor or something like that, and uh, for example, you were at uh, C minor two, yeah. and you wanted to change the preset, you go to the next one, it would come up with C major, major two. two, which is a bit jarring. Yeah. So we fixed that. Yeah. So now, as it applies to the entire box, you set that key, mess around with presets, yeah. do whatever you and want. And that affects hard tune yes. and harmony. We actually found uh, it was sort of a sub bug that the, the har uh, hard tune scale would update once, and then it would never update again. So as you changed the first time that global key and scale via the harmony button here, yep. you'd set it to C minor, whatever it is, and your hard tune would update once to C minor, and then you go to another preset that had hard tune on it, and you'd change it to D or something, and it wouldn't update, and it would be stuck on C minor. So that got fixed as well, the little tie in between those two. Because obviously- And for the two of you in the entire universe that had that problem, <laughs> we fixed it. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> if, you're, if you're a singer using global yeah. key and scale, it, you do obviously, if you are using hard tune at any point, you yeah. do want that to follow the right yeah. key and scale, so that does it as well. Okay, let's tell them about the rhythmic fix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like my grandma. Oh my god, my grandma cannot keep time at all. It's hilarious yeah. watching her do it. Okay, tell them about rhythmic. Oh, me. Okay, fine. Um, we had an issue where the rhythmic wasn't quite following the met tempo correctly. So if you had a chopper, it was chopping, but it wasn't following the tempo. Yeah, it would kind of, sometimes it would feel perfect, and other times yeah. it wouldn't, so we really tighten that up. It works yep. great all the time. Um, I'll show you in a different tutorial that I'm going to do about how to do some, some rhythmic stuff with loops, but if you want to make guitar sound super tight and you're not a super tight player, use rhythmic in little bursts, and it sounds <laughs> awesome. Um, just a little, you know, insider tip It's like auto-tune for your guitar yeah, playing. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, hey, I played the other part in the loop. But also, we got some other things working that weren't working correctly before. That's right. You know, on those syncopated, um, the syncopated rhythmic styles yeah. for the vocal. Yeah. Like, you know, you said you went to them and you went, ah, it didn't sound very good. It sounded yeah. kind of goofy. They were only playing about half of the half of the syncopated right. file. Right. Yeah. So uh, ha there's a little file that we use that gives you these syncopated beats. I think actually uh, you that um, one. I think I Do you might give actually an have one. Hey. Is that doing it? I can't remember which one. No, it's this one. I'm using syncopated chop there. Syncopated chop? Oh, you are? Yeah, so if you go down from chopper, you'll see I'm using syncopated. Ah. So, that da -da 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 -da. Right. so that's working correctly now across nice. all of the box. Yeah, good. Um, now this is a big one actually. It's, I wouldn't necessarily consider it a fix, but it's something we've done in the firmware to allow preset conversion next one. Yeah. yeah, to take place inside the box. So this applies to 
if you're a Voice Life 3 user going from this Build 187 that's been on this, the website for a long time, you're going directly to Build 2.0.1.9. whatever we are putting out, your presets will update in the box um, automatically, which is really great. You just update the whole unit and all the presets that are there will, will work. The other one is that if you are if you are a Voice Live 3 user, you can export your presets. Your user presets. Your user presets, and you can put them on Voice Live 3 Extreme, which is great. The one that you've just bought. Absolutely. So the, the process in order to do that is that you would take your Voice Live 3 presets, upgrade your unit with the Voice Live 3 presets in there, then export them to an archive within uh, Voice Support, disconnect the Voice Live 3, plug in the Voice Live 3 Extreme, update it, and then throw the presets in, and they'll all work perfectly, which is really great. So you don't That's lose right. anything between, yeah. and, and especially, like you said, for upgraders, somebody who's had a Voice R3, you've maybe put a whole lot of work into a lot of presets. You don't want to have to rebuild them or anything. That's the process you go through. Nice. Yeah. Um, what's this clear entry exit from record? Audio? Oh, for those people with the extreme, when you're going into uh, record your song, yeah. oftentimes you wouldn't get this quick prompt. It would be so oh, quick, you'd be I like, see. am I recording or am I not recording? Right. Or even when you went, oh, okay, I'm finished recording. Oh, did I finish? Am I just burning up the SD card? Can I finish? Can I finish? <laughs> Can I have a witness? Um, so yeah, so that's just a little bit clearer. These are yeah. the little tweaks and optimizations we love to do to make your life a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And we've done a few more of them under the hood that you probably wouldn't even understand, even if we understood them. We don't understand them. The engineers, you know, they do this kind of typing stuff that just makes it all work better. So anyway. Yeah, it's great. We get an email saying we've betterized it by 2%. And, and we, we take their word for awesome. it. Yeah, they're great. We love these guys. So thanks so much for hanging out with us. I know this has been long, but there's yeah. a lot of stuff to cover. And we're going to continue working on both Voice Live 3 and Voice Live 3 Extreme. We'll be bringing more features to you in the future.